Cars. No, I'm just touched. Hello and welcome to a project that I've been wanting to do since I was probably about nine years old. Picture this. You are me as a young lass watching Disney Channel and the Even Stevens Halloween special comes on and you see this work of costuming masterpiece. Well check it out, it's good, right? Much like I do in my adult life, little me decided, well that's it, that's gonna be my entire personality. Ever since then I have had such a soft spot in my heart for illusion costumes. They make my brain go Burr. I love the idea of kind of interactive costumes and costumes that make you go, huh? I've kind of had this idea for a while now and I kept putting it off because I felt like it was extremely intimidating, which I, I, well, I still feel like that. A dragon puppet. More specifically, Daenerys and Drogon. I am not uh, oft good at engineering and big brain thinking. <sighs> I do this every single project. I psych myself out and I stall and I just keep making sounds with my mouth. But we're gonna get started. With me on my journey, the amazing Olivia from Avant Geek. She is going to be making a Charizard with a Pokemon trainer while I make my Drogon and so it's gonna be really really nice to have her to sort of bounce ideas off of and commiserate with share scrapbook photos because we're both gonna be proud mothers this is just flying by the seat of my dragon saddle raining fire amongst all the civilians and innocents for the record if you ask me what I think about the last season of Game of Thrones you'll probably get this response la 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 it didn't exist let's break this project down the body the puppet head then I actually have to make the cosplay. <laughs> I have this reference image for what I want to do for the outfit. I'm really not worried about accuracy here. I think the dragon is probably going to be the main focal point. The fake arm. If you have been following me on Instagram, you will know. Quite a few months ago, I got a delivery of one of the weirdest things that I had to search online for. If you were to do a quick Google search of a Jessica arm, not only would you find images of Oscar Isaac sensually sniffing Jessica Chastain's arm, but you would find this product by the Dapper Cadaver, which I believe I believe it's a Halloween prop store, at least I'm hoping so. And you can even customize the stump. And I said, no gore, please. Now the delivery of this made me the happiest little lad in the land. Art thou ready? Hands in, team. Break! To help me with this engineering feat, I watched a lot of YouTube videos from Keep Jarring Charlie and other creators to really help me figure out how the heck I'm gonna make this illusion with the giant puppet on my back, stick my arm in it, and then the fake arm, and I think I finally have a decent understanding and we're ready to get started. First things first, it was time to make the little sock body. So I laid down on some craft paper, traced out the general shape of what I wanted, like the weirdest episode of Big Comfy Couch ever. I then took this thrifted bed sheet that I just got and cut it out like it was any other sewing pattern. Brought it to my sewing machine only to be distracted by how small he is. How is he so small? I tried on the skin bag and realized that my arm already hurt from holding it up for about 15 seconds and then I felt the fleeting stab of regret. To make the throat <laughs> he just made a channel like a big pocket. I was really just winging this, as you can tell by these words of confidence. I don't know! I think that's right, but I don't know! Once I sewed it all together, somehow it actually worked. <laughs> I did this to allow a channel for my arm without getting stuffing in the way every time I would try to put this on. Speaking of stuffing this empty carcass, one of the YouTube videos I watched suggested stuffing the tail with a little bit heavier material, like a towel, but I took some old pillowcases that were in the basement just to give the tail a little weight and then realized I was gonna need a whole lot more stuffing. Birthday, Mr. President. I look like a pagruda. Armed with way more polyfill and determination, I got to work stuffing the rest of it. I think as a being whose sole purpose is to take the stuffing out of toys, Frodo was genuinely concerned and confused. Can I make you a new spooning buddy? <laughs> ah! Now that I could tell everything was gonna work and I was looking pretty buff, we're moving on. 
for Drogon's base skull, I used a template that I found on Etsy and it was super, super helpful. You just print out all of the template pieces, cut them all out, grab some EVA foam from my stash and trace them out, making sure to trace out those registration marks. Then it was time to get a little sexy. Taking contact cement, I put it on both sides that needed to be joined, and then sort of like a puzzle piece, just matching those registration marks and putting all of them together. Naturally, I needed to do a very accurate test. I modified the pattern a little bit by adding this jaw piece, but other than that, super, super easy and super, super helpful. Good morrow. We have made some decent progress for a day's worth of work ahead. He's looking a little raptor-ish right now. Actually, part of my plan today is I'm gonna bulk up the areas needed in the back with all his horns and stuff. So I'll probably bulk up around here. I am then gonna go in with foam clay to do all the details. Also, I wanna add the hinges today, which I will show you a method that I learned throughout my copious amounts of research. For the body, slithery boy. <laughs> oh my God. He's officially in his worm stage. Ooh. Oh, 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 my boy! <laughs> you dig? This feels like that scene in Ace Ventura. <laughs> I need to start working on the limbs, which... <gasps> lots of foam, which was quite an adventure <laughs> at the craft store. My plan is to carve his little whims out of this, so we'll see. Previously, when I made my mushroom hat, I used a turkey sculptor, carver, whatever. <laughs> and it worked okay, but it was, it was really ragged, kind of a hot mess. I also did order, ching, ka-chow. You ready? <clears throat> Quite pleased with the results of this test, I channeled my best Tuscan Raider. <laughs> to make the hinge, I watched a whole video on it. I'll link it in the description, but basically I'm burning two holes, getting little snippets of plastic tubing, and then you're gonna use a hot glue gun, but not the glue part, just the heat, and you're gonna heat up the bottoms of it. The plastic is all malleable. Then you're gonna squanch it against a flat surface and wait till it sets. And then when it sets, it's gonna look something like that. So you're gonna poke that through the holes and do it with the other side. hinge was done, I added some bulk with some foam because I knew that the back of his head was gonna need a little bit more volume with the horns. All right, looking at his back legs, pretty basic like animal legs. So you got hind part here, goes down, three toes, I think there might be a smaller toe, like a dew claw, and then back up. And you're watching the Disney Channel. <laughs> The front ones are a bit tricky because, sort of like a bat, his arm goes down into one big thumb and then the four fingers are actually part of the wing. Spikes in the wings are his fingers, which is sort of gross. Because I'm not doing the wings just yet, I, I'll figure that out. For now, I'm just gonna do my best. These two can work for the back legs. So taking the worm boy, figuring out kind of the scale of this. Ooh, okay, I'm just gonna make a drumstick. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Something like that. That's the shape I'm going with. Wish me luck. Obviously needs to be shaved down, but conveniently hide my shoulder. Okay, cool. This is making me ridiculously happy. Yeah, 
de día. Hello and welcome back. You saw my progress yesterday, but I did a very, very quick kind of placement test with the fake arm that I have. I could not be happier with how the illusion is coming along. We are gonna start making him look a little bit more like Drogon. I've got my reference here. Foam clay. I don't want this to be too heavy. As much as I would love gigantic biceps on only one side of my body, my only thing about foam clay is that it's not super sturdy and it's a little bit fragile. Pieces can break off. I unfortunately have been having that problem with my Grogu. No, I'm sorry, my boy. So for the horns where those, whoa, I just went a little New Zealand with that. <laughs> Susceptible to breaking off, especially where I need to pack this or ship it or figure out how the frick I'm gonna get it to Dragon Con. If I can take this upholstery foam and put the foam clay on top of that, if it does break, it'll just be kind of a crack and it won't fall off. I think I'm gonna do those separately and put them off to the side to set, work on the rest of his facial features. Also, I have his eyeballs, which I'm very excited about. <laughs> Little glass eyes. That'll do, pig. Hey, now he really looks like a raptor. <laughs> Let's frickin' do it, baby! Because this was so small scale and because I needed to do so many horns, I just did this with scissors. I was gonna be covering them with foam anyway, so they didn't need to be super, super smooth. I then quite simply wrapped all of these millions of horns in foam clay, which looks a little uh, turd-like, so I, I won't include all that much footage. I had a little phone call with Olivia and we went over our methods and progress and you know, how much we love our little sons so far. Zenit was back to work and I put the eyes on and then started covering the entire skull in foam clay. This allowed me to sculpt as I went along. Aside from the major horns, I did add a little bit of smaller horns here and there without any reinforcements. I figured this would probably be fine and they probably wouldn't get knocked off. And the next day the horns were all set and it was time to attach. Welcome back to my den of chaos. It is time to shave some leggies. <laughs> sort of like a topography markings on here to tell myself what is gonna be the highest point and then what I can really trim down on. I, I, I don't know how this is gonna go. I'm, I'm hoping for the best. I'll take adequate. Huzzah. Oh yeah. Like butter. If it's wrong to be in love with a set of two serrated blades, I don't want to be right. I then trim these up with some scissors and then use my Dremel tool to smooth it out and refine it even more. And I wore a mask for this and I'm so glad I did because... Y'all ready to get crazy? <laughs> Pondering how I was gonna paint these limbs. I know that in special effects makeup, a lot of times to paint foam latex appliances, artists will mix liquid latex with acrylic. I believe it's called Pax Paint. Ding! Ding! A little Pax Paint of my own. I did some test <laughs> with the massive scale of these is gonna be uh, quite an undertaking, but you know, we do what we have to do for our children. And if I, I am nothing if not a selfless mother. I think that's probably gonna work. <laughs> Maybe. Oh my God. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers appreciated. Let's go. <laughs> <sighs> I 
I don't know if you've ever smelled liquid latex before, but that barn. I can only liken the smell to someone microwaving their fish leftovers in a 400 square foot office. And there's no AC in the building. Thanks. Back in we go. Surprise, this didn't work. After a couple days of adding layer upon layer, it just was not getting any smoother. You could see all the serrations from the blade. So I went and got this fabric from the fabric store, added contact cement on both the arm and the fabric, and then just wrapped it like a little seaweed wrapped sushi. <laughs> several days later. Essentially, there are about 5,325 things that need to happen today, all at the same time. <sighs> Honestly, it's the first day that I've actually put on makeup and haven't been wearing the same outfit. It's been so muggy and so hot, and I have been in the most craft goblin zone that you could possibly get in. So let me go over quickly what I've been up to. First I tackled his little dorsal fins all over his body. I was truly just fudging my way through this, <laughs> cutting foam pieces every four inches for those little spike, shaping it a bit, and then hot gluing all of the spikes on and I decided to do the other side as well. I then just glued the hot glue onto the body and repeated the process four more times for the other fins near his head. Then it was time to move on to his mouth. I knew that the teeth were gonna get a lot of traction and a lot of traffic from rubbing up against each other, so I cut about a zillion little teeth out of the white foam that I had, cut into triangles, and then used my Dremel to shape them a bit, which ended up being tricky little mother fudgers. <laughs> Some of them yeeted so far across my barn, I still to this day don't know where they went. Because foam clay has sort of an adhesive quality to it, I was able to just push the teeth in. This was very satisfying and reminded me of that Play-Doh toy from the 90s. The wings, I just made up a shape, cut it out, and used corset boning to hot glue the structure on. I added some detail with my hot knife, and this was really, really fun to do and satisfying as well. priming with flex bond which is essentially mod podge but it goes on a lot thicker and sets so quick but it really really helped make all of these holes look a little bit more natural natural holes for the tongue i actually ended up using the failed method from earlier but it really worked and the liquid latex made it look kind of gross and gummy but it really worked for the tongue so so what we need to do today paint yes realistically i think that's all we're gonna get to today so, are you ready to paint? Let's fucking do it. paint the wings I just painted those spines and then I used a color paint spray for the inner wings I also painted his little legs first with a base coat and then going in with my airbrush and then some more delicate painting by that I mean just rubbing my grubby hands all over it Are you ready to make a completely bullshit outfit? Uh, yep. Settle down now. It's like weirdly comforting. I am going to employ the use of my hot glue gun as opposed to sewing. I know the seamstresses are shaking their head with robust disappointment, but 
What can I say? <laughs> I have this crinkled linen-esque material that I got and dyed. It started as this sort of beige, but I took some black dye and started making my delicious sludge soup. But first, belly rubs. And then receiving a look of betrayal so strong that I needed to go in for round two. Pouring the dye into the near boiling water, sticking the fabric in, and then adding some salt to pretend I know what I'm doing and for flavor. <laughs> Letting that sit for 30 minutes and then washing it outside like a disgruntled washing woman from the 1700s. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I searched for a full 20 minutes this morning to try to find this in my house because I took it out of the dryer yesterday and I guess I just started wandering. I used to get mad at myself for losing things, and but at this point I try not to get mad, and instead I just think, yeah, that makes sense. It's kind of just like a wrapped shirt, tunic thing, some shoulder pads, so I think I'm gonna make the shoulder pads out of foam. I got this skirt from ThreadUp. So it's just a secondhand suede skirt. My plan is to put this on the mannequin, tear it up with some scissors, cut a little bit of the bottom off so I can stick that around the waist, and then hit it with my airbrush later to give it a little bit of weathering. So, with that, I'm gonna turn the AC back on and get to work. Hot glue gods, I beseech thee! Now comes the quandary of how do I attach this arm? <laughs> I'm thinking if I cut this, okay, my, <laughs> all right, my arm is gonna be up here. So that leaves my armpit where I can stick this. I can cut this on an angle so that it kind of sits in my armpit a little bit better. Cover the top of it with some fabric. Fake the top of that shoulder pad that I'm gonna have on the other arm an elastic strap so that it just stays. I, I have a feeling that I'm probably gonna be like constantly, cause it's gonna like wanna go over here. Oh, and then it's gonna wanna go over here. Oh, surprise, it's here. Do you ever have moments where you think if someone looked at my window right now, they might call Netflix to make a true crime documentary about you? Turns out this was really hard to cut and it was almost easier to pluck it out with my hands, which made me feel even more like an absolute heathen. Hey baby, you know I had to do it to him. <laughs> well, there she is. There's gonna be so much hiding this that I'm really not super concerned. It's easy to get on and off. It's pretty comfy. It's so freaky. I don't think I'm gonna be adjusting it all that much. This hangs out, man. And I'll probably be posing for pictures like this. Uh, okay, cool. Now that that problem is out of my way, we can start assembling, which I'm a little nervous for because the legs are a different material than the body. I am thinking I can solve that problem with some fabric paint. So that way, even though there is a difference of material from bed sheet to rubbery fabric that has scales on it, I'm gonna try to bridge the gap a little with some metallic puffy paint. time to do the final finishing touches, airbrushing a few things, and we're about ready for the reveal.
Ask not for who the Baja blasts, it blasts for thee. All right, wrap up time before I gorge myself on some tacos. He's done and I absolutely love him. As always, let's talk what went well, what didn't go so well, what I need to improve on because I am going to be taking him to Dragon Con. A few convenience things and practicality things that I'm gonna have to make some changes. First of all, I'm gonna have to find a way to keep him on my shoulder over here. He's some Velcro on the top of here and on the bottom of his belly. If I am gonna have to be holding that fake arm and not have it like dangling, because it's a little obvious when that happens, everything else is really heavy that the tail wasn't as weighted down as it was when it was just a snake. I have to do a hefty <gasps> readjusted on my shoulders. I think I am gonna keep the head and body separate. I just found this was a lot easier to kind of slide the dragon on first and then worry about the head. I do want to put a little bit of fabric here to kind of hide these ugly edges. I would also like to add some straps to the inside so that my hand's not sliding around. But other than that, the head is absolutely a dream come true. I love him so much, he's so cute. <laughs> It's a decent weight. I was taking photos for around an hour. My arm does feel a little bit sore, but it's not that bad. The body, a lot of my concerns that I did have were kind of negated by the fact that there's just so much going on. You really don't pay all that much attention to the texture difference. And also the wings kind of cover a lot of the not so great details. <laughs> Something I do want to do before the next convention with it though is secure the legs maybe by some stitches. Right now they're just glued on with so much hot glue. As far as the costume, this was not my priority for this video. I'm gonna weather these pants cause they're just, they're giving me princess bean vibes. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll add a couple more things to this outfit and work on the wig a little. This is just how it came and these braids are mighty dinky. So I need some more girthy braids for Danny. So happy and I cannot wait to take this to the public and to a convention and get people's reactions and freak some people out. I'm, I'm proper chuffed. I hope that you guys had fun. <laughs> like SpongeBob, I pretty much erased everything from my brain but this project for like a solid two work week. So now that it's done, I just, I don't know what to do with my time. I'm sure I'll find something. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun. I will leave all the resources that I learned from down in the description. I'm an absolute ding dong. Uh, make sure you also check out Olivia Avant Geek's project. because She's amazing and I was squeeing the entire time seeing her dragon. So definitely go check that out. Patreon, $5 a month, patreon.com slash Rachel Maxi. A really decent amount of extra videos there now. I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every other Friday and we have fun here. Ow. And I will see you in my next video. Oh, I gotta get up. <sighs> Bye. <laughs> oh. I don't even know what sound just came out of my body. Oh, hummingbird. Lovely. Let's go! <laughs> I've got no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry about that noise. Oh, no, that's not a toy. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, that's like me and Mr. Darcy. <laughs> Look at it! <laughs> Look at it! What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs>